Hey Tubes, welcome back to the channel. Today we're working on a 2008 Honda Civic. We are going to be replacing the clutch master cylinder. The clutch master cylinder in this vehicle is uh, very noisy when you depress the clutch and it's super annoying so we're going to change it. It is in the worst possible location I think Honda could have put it. It is behind the left front strut tower and almost impossible to get to so let's tackle this job and get at it. Here we are underneath the left side of the vehicle. We have to remove the bolts that hold the clutch master in place. As you can see, here's our clutch pedal. We have to remove that nut right there, that cotter pin right there, and that nut right up in there. That clip is broken. Somebody's been here before. This is the pin that connects the clutch master to the pedal assembly. I'm just gonna belt push that out now. Grab it from the back side. My lighting's very poor, sorry. Now I'm gonna get a 12 mil. I'm gonna pull that nut off right there. Just let that fall out of your way. Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Now we have the corresponding 12 mil on the other side. Then both the studs will be removed from the clutch master cylinder. And this will give us the ability to pull it out from underneath the hood when it becomes that time. We're gonna take that 12 mil out right there. Sorry guys, not a very good shot here. Hopefully this falls in a good spot where I can retrieve it again. Because there's no way I'm going to be able to hold that on there. Lucky. For our next step, we have to put our wipers in the service position. We're going to turn the key all the way on. We're going to push the wiper into the mist position. And when the wipers reach the top point of the windshield, I'm going to shut the key off. Key is shut off. Wipers are in the vertical position. With the wipers in the service position, we're able to remove this cowl and take off the inspection tray or whatever you want to call the undershield here to gain access to the clutch master which is located way down behind the left front strut tower. Got some Christmas tree clips here we can remove. One. That was being challenging. I like to remove the caps for the strut tower access to remove the struts. <clears throat> I put my hand in behind it and I kind of help it up. We have a disconnect the washer line. Now to remove this uh, metal service tray piece, splash shield, I don't know what to call this piece. You guys tell me in the comments. 
So we have three 10 mil bolts, two on either side, one directly down the middle, and we have four 12 mil bolts that bolt in the strut tire on either side. We're just gonna zip those out now. 12 mil. Ten millimeter. And there's a ten millimeter located down in Davy Jones's locker there. Got it. Totally lied. There's two more ten mil bolts on either side here. Ta-da! I still can't see it. It's back in there. I think for the next thing, next part I'm gonna remove, I wanna take this bad boy out. That's our air box. We're gonna get this air box out of our way. We're gonna remove the mass air flow. Sensor harness here. Unplug it, two clips, fold it out of the way. We're gonna do the tubes from our air snorkel here. I'm undoing the purge line connector. And I'm pulling the harness away from the intake snorkel tube. Intake tube, snorkel, what do you ever want to call it? Intake tube. We're gonna to have to loosen the clamp here at the throttle body. That is a 5.5 millimeter. Five point five millimeter. I'm shocked this is loosening off. This is a rust belt car, and as you can see, it's very corroded. Rusted, rotten, whatever you want to use. We have a 10 mil right here. There's a 10 mil in between the brake master cylinder reservoir and the by down here. This air intake tube. We give it a little wiggle. Loosen the throttle body. Now we have to uh, loosen off our fresh air intake clamp for the PCV system. Love these clamps. Sarcasm. There is a rubber grommet down here. You have to pull the air box straight up before you can turn it sideways. Just because that's a little wiggle. Got my fresh air tube out. Now let's not see if we can wrestle this out of here. Got her out. Let's get this brake master cylinder reservoir out of the way and the master cylinder out of the way. I'm just gonna Pull it to the side. I don't want to disconnect any of the lines. We're going to leave them alone. Um, it's a 10 mil bolt holding the master cylinder reservoir on. Let's get that off now. Success. It stayed in. Going down plug. The fluid level sensor. 
Now you can see our brake master reservoir is loose. We have two 12 mil bolts on either side of the master cylinder on here. I'm gonna zip them out and pull the master cylinder forward. It's a funny angle. I have the two 12 mil nuts removed from the uh, brake booster so that we can pull the master cylinder away. Our reservoir is loose. This uh, brake master has been on here a very long time and it's pretty tight. Be mindful of the brake booster seal right here and which way it went back in. That's critical for proper brake operation. With the brake master cylinder now out of our way, we can see the clutch master cylinder tucked way in behind there. There are two connections on the clutch master cylinder. The high side line which you can see there and the also the reservoir line where it feeds it. It's a very challenging spot to get those clips on and off inside the car. What I've done in the past and had success with is actually removing all the lines connected to the master at one time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the clutch master fluid reservoir off the hose, unclip it down there, and then where the high side line goes, here, I'm going to unclip it from the body so the line and everything all comes out as one unit. I'm going to pop this reservoir off. Cut it off. I'm going to fish it underneath this harness because it is going to come off with the clutch master as a whole unit. Clamp here, unclip it. Now you can see the reservoir and holes are completely loose. For the next part, follow your delivery line or your high pressure line and unclip it from all the, all the brackets. I'm going to take the battery out now and get that out of my way also. This is not the standard battery for the vehicle. So yours will be different. You'll have J-bolts, which probably be a lot easier to take out. We got a couple 10 mils on our post clamps. What? Two by six? Normally I would take the delivery line off of the flex hose here, but you can see how corroded that is and that's pretty much impossible without destroying that connector and have to remake the line. So my next option is, as I'm going to remove, there's two 10 mil bolts, with one right here and one right here. I'm going to take this whole bracket off the car and my hope is that with the flex hose being loose from the main line, it's going to give me enough wiggle room to get the whole assembly out. Righty tighty, lefty loosey.
Look at that bolt. Come right out of there. Same. Now our line's quite loose. Our high pressure line here loops underneath our main engine harness. Think I should try to take that harness out of my way too? Or struggle with it? I'm going to try to remove it by just removing these two clips and pulling this harness out of my way. Hopefully I have enough wiggle room. Then uh, my hope is that the whole clutch master and lines will all come out as one unit. Wow, that was surprisingly easy to consider the amount of rust on this turd. Look at that, came right off. Just gonna kind of get that out of my way up there. Now I have a little window here of work. Now it's struggle time. Let's see if we can get this out of here now. You're going to have to pull the clutch master away from the firewall and try to wiggle it out. Have both the lines free here. Just drop your light because, you know, that's what happens all the time. I have the clutch master free from the firewall. You probably can't see it. Just kind of wiggling it through here. Aha! Here it is. We got our clutch master out. You can see that all the lines are still connected. We still have our uh, reservoir there. Uh, we're gonna take the reservoir off. My hope is that I can do the switch over of the things right here and uh, not uh, disturb this line too much. As you can see, it's in pristine condition. It's, it's like new. I don't know why it would be making noise and not working as it should. Things don't last forever. Like it's, the car's brand new, it's only got 400,000 miles. Like I don't understand why it, it'd be making noise already. Just gonna pull the uh, clutch master reservoir off here. Got her pinched so I don't leak fluid. Now to remove the main line. We don't unthread the uh, fitting here. There's actually like a retaining clip here that we have to remove. It's in a U shape. You can see right here. I'm just gonna get my low screwdriver underneath it. And just kind of work it loose. Pull it out. You can see I've mostly got out right here. There's that clip. Now with this clip removed, I should be able to pull this straight out of the clutch master. Oh, that was pretty easy. Parts like brand new. I don't see anything wrong with it. Here we have our new clutch master. Um, it's a perfection, whatever that means. The build quality does not look the best. It's some of our best products from China. Uh, one thing I'd like to point out is that the uh, push rod length here, it's left loose, so it is adjustable once you get back in the car. Um, and we go to feed this back through this way into the firewall, we want to make sure this end is the right way because once it goes in the car, it's really hard to kind of spin that because it interferes with the clutch pedal. So we're going to take our uh, caps off, throw them down there. And uh, yeah, it comes with a gasket here. I'm going to double check these bolts and make sure they're tight. I have no idea what this contraption here does. 
and I don't know why it's on there. Maybe we'll take the old one apart if we can, if it's not too rotten, and check it out. We have a, a service to system, whatever that means, and uh, yeah, hey, there's a the number. And I've been lucky enough that this was a, a, an open box, and somebody has kindly wrote their name on it, and the bag was open, so hopefully I'm not doing this twice. As I'm getting ready to put this in, I'm looking down the hole where the line fits into. I don't see a seal. Grab the old one. Yep, seal's there. That's why you gotta pay attention, people. Instructions. What do I see in the box? It's stuck in the bottom. My new seal. Make sure we get this new seal in that cheap master. I wouldn't want you to get all back together and realize that you can't bleed the clutch because there's no pressure. It's all leaking out. What do you think? On the line first or in the bore first? This is a glove off type of job. I'm going to put it in the bore first. Don't laugh at me. You guys really can't see what's going on, can you? I'm just uh, struggling over here. I don't know if you guys can see there or not. I got the seal on the bore. Got my new clutch master. I got my new seal there. I'm just gonna put a little bit of uh, silicone on the edge of the clutch master cylinder line here. So hopefully we don't tear that seal and it just kind of goes in a bit smoother. Sticker in. Gonna fish my clip back through. What's nice about this style is that the uh, clutch master does move around. The clip does not fit very well. I'm assuming it's because this clutch master is such high quality. Um, if you had the OEM one, I'm sure that would slide right in. It feels like the, the holes for the clip are just a hair wider than the OEM one. So I'm just going to help it along and give it a little tickle. I can look down my holes and everything's lined up. I'm a big fan of OEM parts. But in this case they're very expensive. It doesn't seem like it really wants to go down through that bore. Maybe it has to go in a certain way. I flipped it and it's going in without issue. Now it's locked up. I just realized that the factory one went that way through. 
I wonder if that makes a difference. This thing has been really challenging. Do yourself a favor and just buy the OEM one. Then you don't have to deal with this aftermarket crap. The bore is like just hair off. It doesn't want to go in there at all. And it's lined up perfectly. Do, 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 do. Seven times a charm. What do you think, people? Think this thing's going to fit like it's supposed to now? For the amount of work this is and how challenging that is to get out, do yourself a favor and just go buy the Honda part. It's for the, how much cheaper this thing is, it's not worth the aggravation. It's not designed to handle this clip at all. It's just a hair off. There we go. I had to re-drill the holes where the clip went in. Not even close to being the right size. I've actually bent this a little bit, trying to force it in there, which I probably shouldn't have done. A little too rammy, but it's in there now. As you can see, it's sticking out the other side. Aftermarket. I'm pretty sure it's called Perfection Clutch. This is the first time I've used their products. And, uh, you get what you pay for, it's cheaper for a reason. There, got that in there finally. Now we probably get that uh, reservoir back on and do a little fishing to get it back in there. Now that we have our uh, feed line put on, gonna put on the uh, reservoir hose. Put our clamp back on. Ta da!
Now you just gotta finagle that into its place. Both my studs are through. Mine line, feed line looks like it's uh, to the sleeves and it looks like it's in, it, in order. We'll just uh, fish our reservoir back to its home. Got this line here. And not forget our engine ground strap here. You know what, I wanna put that on after I tighten those ones. Ground strap. We'll zip those two 10 mils down. Before I reassemble all this, um, I'm gonna connect the clutch master to the clutch pedal. And I wanna bleed this system before I put it all back together, only because I don't trust this master cylinder. If it, it was an open package, and uh, if it doesn't work, I'd rather find out now rather than when I have it all back together because I have to do it again. So let's go in the vehicle and reconnect the clutch pedal. From underneath the car, from underneath the driver's side of the vehicle, we're going to be putting a 12 mil nut on there. One way up there, you really can't see it. It's hard to get to. And once we get them tightened up and straight, we're gonna reconnect our clutch master to the pedal assembly. One, the next one over is going to be tricky. I've put it in my socket. I'm going to try to fish it up there. Sorry you can't see the angle. I think we've had success. That one's tight. We'll tighten this one up. Now we have to install this bugger. 
but before we can do that, we have to set the push rod length on the master. It's very challenging to work underneath the uh, dash of the vehicle with a camera. You can see our push rod. It's actually setting right beside the clutch pedal there. The, uh, the two locator tabs are on the master. We want to make sure that's on the other side. So when we slide our pin through, we can get access to the cotter pin hole on this side. Make our life a lot easier. Just gonna push the master in. Give her a spin. It actually looks like our adjustment is perfect. With your clutch pedal all the way released, you should be able to slide the cotter pin through without any issue. Can you see it sticking through there? You just gotta turn it so the locator tabs are lined up. It's really hard to do because your hands don't fit in there. Push it back out. There she goes, all the way through. The length was uh, pretty close in the factory. Now we have to lock the jam nut right there. What size is a jam nut? 13 or 14? Not 13. Oh, the 14's gone there. 14 for the win. I'm just going to throw a cotter pin through the pin. I'm not reusing the factory one because it was damaged already. I was not able to record myself getting the cotter pin in the pin on the clutch master to clutch pedal assembly. That was really challenging with the camera in the way, so it is installed. I'll throw a picture in there of that happening, or what it looked like when it was done, I should say. Now we're going to attempt to bleed this. We have our line all installed. If you look down at the slave cylinder, the bleeder is right there. It's an eight millimeter. We're gonna crack that free and we're gonna use a vacuum bleeder to get the fluid out of this. If you don't have a vacuum bleeder, uh, it is gonna be very challenging to bleed. I suggest that you get one or buy one in order to do this, just make your life a lot easier. Bleeder is loose. Put our vacuum bleeder on our tip of our bleeder here. We're going to throw some dot three into our clutch master reservoir. Let's see if we can pull any fluid through this. Bleeding complete.
Okay, I tighten up our bleeder. We're going to put our cap back on. I'm going to put this harness back out of our way so we can get our master cylinder back in. Now that our clutch hydraulics are all bled, we're going to go ahead and put the master cylinder back in. Don't, for put, don't forget to put your uh, brake booster seal in it. Goes in one way. It's actually indicated on the seal which way it goes. But as you can see, one edge of the seal is flat and the other is round. You want the round edge to go towards the uh, brake booster. Now we can slide that master cylinder back in. Make sure the plunger in the master cylinder lines up with the push rod on the brake booster. We're going to replace the lock nuts that came off from the factory with new ones. We'll just zip those on there. Put our brake master reservoir back on. Don't forget to plug it in. Put our 10 mil back that holds our master cylinder reservoir in place. For the rest of putting the stuff back together, you took it apart, hopefully you know how to put it back together. I'm just gonna make this happen.